Now on this Denver 7 360 in-depth report, out with the old and in with the new. Lots of technology has gone into this tunnel to make it one of the most advanced in the entire country. This weekend's big shift begins a 14-month process to revitalize I-70. For the neighborhood, the effects will stick around much longer. I don't think you would ask well, wealthier neighborhoods to uh, make such a sacrifice. Thanks so much for joining us for this 360 in-depth report. I'm Jason Grenauer. We're just hours away now from the big shift on I-70 through central Denver. Starting at 10 o'clock tonight, the highway will be closed from I-25 to I-270 so crews can move traffic to a new underground section. The highway will stay closed through 5 a.m. Monday morning. Denver 7 traffic expert Jason Luber takes us through everything you need to know about this project and its impact on your weekend travels. Getting around the mile high switch is actually not going to be as tough as you imagine because the detours are really easy. This is the area that's going to be closed down I-70 between Washington Street and I-270. This entire section is going to be closed down between 10 p.m. tonight all the way until Monday at 5 a.m. when traffic will be shifted onto that new lowered section. If you were heading east on I-70 or north I-25, you could use I-25 up to I-76. You go east a little bit, take that eastbound 270 transition, pass the refinery and then all the way back to I-70. If you were heading west on I-70, let's say from the airport, and you wanted to get around it, you would take that exit. It's going to be detoured at 270, past Vasquez, the refinery, to I-76, where you'll head west, and you have two options from there. Southbound I-25 to I-70 to head west, or continue on I-76 west all the way where it joins I-70 out by Wadsworth. And then come Monday morning, this is going to be your new look. These would be the westbound lanes, the eastbound lanes just on the other side of the divider. It will feel a little bit narrow in there, and there's a lot to look at, so traffic will be a little bit slower than normal until folks get used to the new lanes of I-70. Take a look at the old viaduct. There's a lot of concrete rebar and other materials on that bridge deck and holding up that bridge deck and much of the old infrastructure is close to the new infrastructure. This will be a very surgical process. We will be uh, basically saw cutting from above. You saw cut portions of the bridge deck and then you take a crane and you lift it off and actually process that bridge deck on the ground. And so once we get all the bridge deck off, lifting it off piece by piece, uh, then we will cut the girders and actually lift the girders off. In, in whole spans and put them on the ground and process them. Workers will use fire hoses to spray water on the demolition to keep the dust down. The project is going to take great care in not damaging any of the adjacent businesses or homes that are just adjacent to the viaduct to the south. And the contractor is going to put up a line of poles and netting along the south side of the viaduct, much like they would for a driving range to keep the golf balls in place. The netting will be there, so make sure that nothing falls down on the homes, the businesses, or any of this brand new infrastructure. The majority of the lowered section is this open air. You know, we've got walls on both sides, but there is open air to the top. However, the cover that thousand feet does have, it, it's more like a tunnel scenario uh, down under that. Only half of the lowered section is done, but all of the traffic is moving. Officials say there's room for both directions of I-70 traffic. We will have slightly narrowed lanes. The lanes will be 11 feet wide. We'll have three of them, so that is our commitment. We are not reducing any capacity for I-70. Drivers will be in a head-to-head -head configuration for 14 months while the viaduct is demolished and the eastbound tunnel is built. A new change that drivers will have to deal with is sun glare. How high will the center divider be when uh, you're up in this area? Yeah, so it's, it's standard guardrail height okay. with a glare screen on it. So, so we're adding the 18-inch glare screen to help protect. When the second tunnel opens, the lanes on both sides will be the standard 12 feet wide and shoulders will be 8 to 10 feet wide. But in the meantime, if you break down or have a crash, you may get pushed to one of the emergency pullouts that CDOT says will be every half a mile. The new section of Central I-70 actually runs below ground for about two miles. A thousand feet of that is a brand new tunnel. For reference, the Eisenhower Tunnel is about 8,000 feet long, and this tunnel is full of all kinds of new interesting technology. The first thing you'll probably notice as you enter the tunnel on the east side are these nine enormous jet fans on the roof. 
They'll be used for two reasons. The first, if air quality gets poor because of stop and go traffic. How do you determine which ones you want on at which times? So the, the system is smart enough that it will actually turn on the jet fan with the least amount of wear and tear on it. The fans will also be used if there's a fire to clear out the smoke. While the fans may increase the fire's intensity, the fans will also create a clearer air pathway for people if they need to exit. And to make sure the fans don't fan the flames, there's a deluge system to flood a fire with a hurricane of water. When the deluge system comes on, it drops 3,500 gallons of water a minute. That is just in that one zone. There are 10 zones in the tunnel where that deluge system will help handle a fire until the fire department can get there. Just outside the tunnel are signs to let drivers know if lanes are closed or if there's a crash up ahead. And there are also speakers so police or the fire department can talk to drivers if needed. And there's also this important sensor. It might look like a camera, but it's actually a sensor that will balance the light inside the tunnel with the light outside the tunnel. We don't want someone who is driving down the roadway to have that, that shock factor when they enter and have their eyes taking 100, 200 feet to adjust. By the time their eyes adjust, now they're back out and they, they have to back adjust to the way it was, just the ambient light. The technology in this tunnel is really astounding. From the lighting of the LEDs, from these huge jet fans, from the deluge water system in case there's a fire, lots of technology has gone into this tunnel to make it one of the most advanced in the entire country. Though it would make sense when we dig into untouched dirt, we might unearth some of those ancient creatures. That's what happened while digging the westbound tunnel for the Central 70 project. Workers found something they wanted the experts from Paleo Solutions in Denver to look at. They found these bones, one of which turned out to be the tooth of a camel-like creature called camelops. I think that most people associate camels as being a big humped animal that lives in the desert. This species, camelops, is a pretty large animal, um, but it may not have had humps. There's no way to tell because humps don't have bones in them and we don't have any soft tissue remains of these animals. They're basically just big grazing animals. They would have eaten grass on the plains and they would have probably herded alongside with antelope. In all, about seven fossils were found under I-70, including a tooth from an ancient horse. Paleo Solutions was also involved in the recovery of a larger fossil dug up at a construction project in Thornton in 2017. The other big discovery found underground near I-70 was an old school. So when they built the new school, um, they demolished the old one and they actually just buried it in the ground. And so we were able to remove that material. Uh, it does contain asbestos and so we, we have had to be very careful about the way we remove that. As construction continues for the eastbound side of the I-70 tunnel, Paleontologists will be monitoring the digging, hoping more discoveries will be made. All of the fossils discovered throughout the project will eventually be given to the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. The Elyria Swansea neighborhoods have been in North Denver since the 1870s. It was always this working class, very heavy industrial uh, neighborhood from its beginnings. Very hard working, very kind of hard scrabble, really. The area was home to railroads, mining smelters, meat packing plants, and family homes. There was also a cemetery. That was actually one of the only crematoria. It was the only cemetery. There's a, uh, my great grandparents are, are buried there. I mean, Riverside Cemetery is, uh, uh, if there's over 70,000 graves there. When I-70 was approved by the federal government, it followed the route of 46th Avenue, cutting right through these neighborhoods. The highway where it currently is, and it, it cut Swansea in half. Uh, it took out many homes in Elyria and Swansea. It, it, uh, the I-70 and I-25 just quartered, split Globeville into four different neighborhoods. Um, and, and divided and separated this area of the city off from the rest of Denver. Drew Dutcher, president of the Elyria Swansea Neighborhood Association, says with CDOT adding toll lanes, shoulders, on and off ramps, and frontage roads, they are taking more of the neighborhood away from them. So by the time you get to it, the effective footprint of the highway through these neighborhoods is, is about, about tripled. I don't think you would ask what wealthier neighborhoods to uh, make such a sacrifice for the region um, 
you know, I think that this is there's there's a problem of equity with that. It's not really fair. And while Dutcher admits the neighborhood needs more green space and he hopes the new park on top of the tunnel will be nice, he's concerned fans being used to keep air quality good inside the tunnel will blow that bad air out towards the school soccer fields and park being built on top of the tunnel. Young elementary school children with developing lungs playing on top of a highway, you know, and, and part of the the construction is to build giant fans so when the pollution gets too bad inside the tunnel you know they'll blow it out. CDOT says an air quality analysis around the tunnel cover showed the areas around Swansea Elementary School and the cover would be at or below the national ambient air quality standards. Jason Luber, Denver 7. You can find more details about this weekend's closure on I-70 right now on the DenverChannel.com. And on Monday, we'll be out there live on I-70 for Denver 7 Morning News as the first drivers make their way through that brand new tunnel. That's all for this Denver 7 360 in-depth report. Have a great weekend.